I got the salesman out here. I said, why does this machine not have an extendable draft arm? Your fuel tank is under your plastic fender. When I talk about this cab being smaller, most of these fenders come out a little wider. Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and I'm out here today to review a John Deere 4066. And you guys know I've been going around and reviewing tractors in this size and horsepower range from every manufacturer, and I've got almost every brand covered. Now, to fit in my review series, we're going to be talking about a 4052, but we're going to be in a 4066. Doesn't really make much difference. All the features are the same. The price will be about the 4052. So, I've got that beautiful big New Holland sitting at the house that I want to make videos about, but it's just pouring rain. So I thought I'd try to do this that doesn't require me to be out in the rain quite as long. So I think on this one, we're going to start on the inside of the cab and get that taken care of and see if this rain lets up a little bit. Now, just to catch you guys up in case you're new here, I am a John Deere guy. I've got a John Deere skid steer. I've got a John Deere compact tractor. Until recently, I had two John Deere mowers, and then I've got a 1941 John Deere A. I like John Deere. I don't know why, but I do. So ever since I got my tractor four years ago, I have called this my dream tractor. That I think it's just perfect size. This size of tractor is perfect. You still have the convenience and easy to operate features of like my two series, but it's got the power to do bigger work. Now, if I'm being honest, I've started to question some of the things I see from other brands, but today we're gonna to try to look at it in detail. And I've gotta be honest, I watched a video on the way here from a friend of mine, Andrew from the Kelly's Country Life. He did a five year review on this exact tractor. He's had the tractor for five years and put 900 hours on it. And he went into great detail about the things that he had problems with and anything he didn't like about the tractor more than, more than anything. But overall, he's been happy with his. So if you want a more thorough, long-time user review, I'll put a link in the video description where you can check out Andrew's video. And if you want to see all the other brands, I've, I've got a video on every brand in this size range. So the first thing I want to say when I get in this tractor is the cab is a little smaller. Now, Andrew said this is the exact same cab that they put on the 3 Series. I don't know that to be true, but I actually believe it as I sit here. It seems like a small cab for this size tractor. But at the same time, I still have plenty of room. But when I say it's small, what I notice is there's no um, quarter panel windows. You've got the door and you've got the back hatch and the back is right up against you. Whereas on the others, your door comes to here, and then you've got a quarter glass that you can crack open and just run with it open if you want, or talk to talk to people through that. And I do think I like the ability to look out that window and talk to people. So we'll start on this side and just work our way around it. So we've got some charging ports here. Those are USB. And then we've got a 12 volt, volt plug here. A little bit of uh, storage for something like a wallet or just little stuff. And then you've got a cup holder right here. Now, Andrew said these cup holders suck because they're not big enough for the tumbler that he uses. But I honestly can't say I ever put a drink in my cup holder, so I do not really care. Here we've got our lever for a three-range transmission. Here we have our emergency brake. Down here are split pedals. And then we've got our dual pedals for the hydro, forward and reverse. I still like that design. Here we have a tilt wheel. If I turn the key on, it's got an air ride seat. The dash looks similar to mine as far as the controls we have here. You're going to have the menu option where you can scroll through it. And I guess I'll just show that for some of you who may not have seen how mine's set up. So these buttons are for your regen system. Turn that on and off. You got turn signals here, and then this is your info. This will give you your ground speed, hours on the tractor, hours on the PTO, 
This is your soot level and your exhaust filter tells you when you're getting close to a regen. And there's some more information inside there, but we won't go into that. This is how you engage your four wheel drive on this tractor. In four wheel drive, not in four wheel drive. Not a bad little setup. It's your windshield wiper. Here's your manual throttle. You got your radio here. Honestly, people expect a radio in a cab, but I don't ever use the radio. I've never listened to the radio in my skid steer, although my son did when he was in it. We've got a dome light here. On this side, we have our heat and AC control. This is the, the temperature, and this turns the AC on and off, and you've got your fan control here. Lots of vents, which is nice. Andrews had a little bit of trouble with his, and he did have a complaint on his that he thinks it should have a recirculate feature so that you're not pulling any dirty air from outside if you're in a dusty environment. I haven't used it in a dusty environment. I can't say how it affects it. And this is some of uh, the things that I want to be fair and say I've not checked any other brand to see if they had a recirculate feature. It's just not something I thought about. So here we've got our loader joystick. I find this to be a comfortable position for that. There are some of these tractors where I was reaching way over here. And I like it where I can reach it with my hand, with my elbow on the armrest, even if I don't use it that way all the time. And here we've got a lock for the loader joystick so you don't bump it when you've got your load up in the air. Here we have our three point, which is like an electronic control very easy control here and it's got a quality stop built into it so if you look here and you wind that down say you want it at five four and a half it's got a lot of clicks in there and you can stop it you've got precise control if you want to put your tiller at the same depth then you lift it up at the end of the pass drop it back to the same spot All the way up, bring it back and stop it. All the way down and stop. These buttons right here are your electric three point raise and lower, which we'll get to in a minute when we're outside the tractor. This engages your PTO. This shows you that there are other features you can add. This looks like a headlight switch, but actually the headlights are here so I'm thinking these are probably lights on the top of the cab. I don't know that for sure. Now, all of this is controlling the E-Hydro. And the E-Hydro is their term for a hydrostatic transmission that has a lot of options built into it. So this top button sets the cruise control. And then you can raise, increase, and decrease the speed that you're using that cruise control at. Then this button is load match. And I've talked about that with some other tractors where when you drive into a pile of rocks, it starts to bog the tractor down like you're at low RPM and you want to be at low RPM, but you pull into that and it starts to bog down. If you've got load match turned on, it's going to increase your RPMs automatically to the point the tractor needs. I like that feature. Now this one I didn't get an explanation on. He was calling it speed match. I was trying to understand if that was the same as the auto throttle or the linked pedal and felt like the salesman was explaining it and I was just having trouble understanding it. This is your run out. This is how much coast the machine has when you let off the pedal and you've got multiple settings there. So let's jump out of the tractor, take a look at the exterior features, and then we'll do a wrap up on price and specs and all of those types of things and just my overall thoughts on this tractor compared to the competition. Okay, so from the outside, one thing we have is the John Deere quick attach bucket. I personally prefer this to the skid steer quick attach. I think this is better. 
I also am slightly resentful that I can't use my skid steer attachments on it. So even though I think this is better, I think they should switch and make skid steer quick attach. That's my personal thought on it. Of course, it's a quick attach loader. They have non-self-leveling or self-leveling loaders. So this same frame is a can be made into either. Now on my tractor, the self-leveling loader lifts more, but on this tractor, it lifts less. Here's our look at our front axle. The front tires seem to be about the same size as the other models we've looked at, although I don't remember the numbers. The tractor feels like it's the same size, but you've got a double step here. Most of them only give you a single step. The height of the top of the tire feels the same. All right, this is actually the exact same tire that was on the Mahindra, 440, 80, 24. Now in the back, we have a fuel fill location here. Your fuel tank is under your plastic fender. I don't want to get into whether plastic or metal fenders are better. I guess I'm going to. I, I like the metal, but you know, mine's held up just fine under four years and 800 hours. I haven't had any problems with the plastic components. So this is an innovative feature from John Deere. Nobody else has this. Other companies have a handle here that lets you raise and lower your three point from off the machine. So this lets you raise and lower your three point from outside the tractor, which is handy for hooking up attachments. This lets you creep the tractor forward and back for alignment here. So as we look at this on the three point, I always say the same thing. I come back here and I say, it's got telescoping stabilizers and it's got extendable draft arms. I got the salesman out here. I said, why does this machine not have an extendable draft arm? It took me a second to understand it, but it actually really makes sense. If you can move the tractor forward or backward super slow, you don't need to extend these. You can put the tractor exactly where you need it to and you get this one hooked up but you're slightly off and you back into this one so this is better we got a nice draw bar we have a hinged pto cover here's our washer fluid reservoir for the rear wiper there is no side entry there's no step on this side Andrew also complained that he thinks there should be a shock on this side to hold this door open, but it doesn't have it where it does on the other side. And that seems like such a small expense. But most of these tractors have had an entry step on this side. And I think this cab sets higher. That's why you need the, the second step. But normally, when I talk about this cab being smaller, most of these fenders come out a little wider. So. The cab is definitively smaller. Let's talk about capacities. Front loader lift capacity is 2,500. I would say average for this class of tractors, 2,800. 300 pounds difference, not that big, but those are just the numbers. On the rear, the three point lift capacity, we are at 3,100. That is a respectable number for this class of tractor. I've seen some with less and some with more. The highest I've seen was the Kubota L series was 3,800. So those numbers are not exceptional. They're not terrible. I've been told that the John Deere has better hydraulic flow rating, the gallons per minute. The flow on this is 15.9 gallons per minute, which is a good number, I know but I have not looked at that number on all the other tractors I've compared, so I can't say where it ranks. The price on this tractor is $60,000 with the tractor, the loader, the cab, and three rear remotes. And where does that rank among prices? Well, it's dramatically higher than some of the other tractors I've looked at. Our cheapest tractor that's comparable to this is the TYM at $35,000. I don't know if that... TYM price was a cash price or a finance price, but even if we said it was 37 or something, it's a big jump from 35 to 50 to 60. And so as we slot them in, we've seen tractors at 35, 39, 42, 53, 
John Deere at 60, and the Kubota equivalent to this is 63,000. So Kubota is actually the most expensive tractor I've found in this class range. But why would someone pay more for this John Deere tractor? And you know the answers already. It's a matter of how much value do you put in those answers and do you believe it to be true? So the reasons you would pay more for this is, number one is just a fact. John Deere has the biggest and best dealer network of anyone in the US for tractors. You won't find another brand with more dealer locations and not just existing dealer locations, but locations that are built out with big service centers and their large dealers. The next reason is parts availability. Every time I go to Heritage Tractor to get a part, they have it in stock or they can have it in 24 hours. I've never tried to get a part for either of my John Deere machines that I couldn't have in 24 hours. Even my John Deere A, I went in and got some stuff right off the shelf. Fuel filters and oil filters and stuff like that. So that's the top reasons. The next thing is this John Deere tractor is American engineered and I think there are certain things that John Deere does better than literally anyone. I think the ability to creep the tractor forward and backward to hook up to your three-point implements, that is an industry-leading feature. I think on my tractor, the backhoe hookup is an industry-leading feature. The mower deck hookup on my John Deere tractor is an industry-leading feature. And in that case, I'm talking about the mid-mount mower. The e-hydro seems really nice. These controls seem really nice. There are quite a few reasons to go with this. There are also some reasons not to go with it. I've made it very clear the price is number one. And I want to be respectful, but... And I want to keep in mind that you get what you pay for, but this tractor costs a lot more. Also, I think this range of tractors is due for a refresh from John Deere. My tractor got a refresh in 2017, and there hasn't been any more refreshes since then. I don't think this tractor has had a redesign since like, you know, the early 2000s. So I think this tractor could really stand to have a little bit bigger cab on it. But none of that would be a deal breaker. I would consider buying this tractor. So I'm sure I left some stuff out and made some mistakes, but that's just how it goes. I appreciate you guys taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.